from the top of the CBS Interactive building in San Francisco and located somewhere in some apartment in Los Angeles, California, <laughs> is your host, Brian Tong. Hey, Beecham from L.A. to the Bay. Yo, what's up, man? West Coast is the best coast. West Coast is what's the up? best coast. <laughs> what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. We are doing this remotely, Stephen. Um, I do miss your smell, your face, oh, your touch. I didn't we're, know I had. I that. guess I didn't know I had a smell. But. No, your not smell. How about this? Your scent. <laughs> is that is that better? My uh, what do they call them? My pheromones. You miss my pheromones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hey, everybody, welcome to the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy episode fifteen. We're doing this remotely. We're doing this back and forth, and uh, you know we wanted to just jump right into it. There's so much stuff going on, but again, if you guys want to be a part of this show, all you have to do is call us and leave a voicemail. One eight hundred six one six two six three eight is the number. Tell us your name, where you're from, and jump right into your question or your comment. We will play them on the show, and to prove that, we will play other people's comments on the show later on today. Right? Yes, we have quite a bit of vo- voicemails. So thanks for calling us, guys. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Okay, let's jump into it. We know that it is iPad Pro week. The iPad Pro went on sale online on Wednesday. People were able to pick some of them up in person. Uh, you know, I've been talking about the iPad Pro for years now. Like, I really wish I could be there with Beecham just so I could rub it against his I want to touch it. I haven't I haven't even oh. felt one or held one yet. You can't even see this, but right now I'm just doing like iPad feel my face right now. <laughs> You can't. People listening, they can't even see this. The iPad film on. It just looks like a giant iPhone. It's so oh, funny. Look at look at how big this is, dude. <laughs> look at. I can I can't put this in my pocket. The thing is huge. It's, I gotta say though, um, right now just my initial thoughts. I don't have uh, all the accessories for it. We'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, as a larger iPad and a media consumption device, this thing is awesome. Like, on the plane, the first thing I like set it up. Dude next to me is like whoa like he's like is that a big ipad (laughs) then he couldn't stop looking at i was reading comics it finally feels great when you you know no matter what everyone says oh media content is so much more immersive yeah because it's a bigger screen but did you guys just settle into the flight and just watch a film together no i i did play some videos so i could show it to him and he was like you know it's one of those like the bromance like (laughs) totally showing off to a guy yeah and then the other guy's like oh this is awesome and you guys are vibing and then like it's just it's totally geeky, right? That's but uh, funny, man. he was digging it. I would say just initial impressions. The speakers on this are awesome. I can actually kind of, I'm not saying it's worth the money to pay $1,000 if you just want better speakers, but you know, you can use this as a standalone. I was like playing a Justin Bieber's latest album, Purpose. Oh my, I can't believe I outed myself and just said that. <laughs> like, not the only one, man. I was just talking about it too. It's a good like, album. People are into it. Don't get it twisted and don't knock it unless you tried it, but the best way I could describe it, and Steven's a music guy, so you know he'll he'll be able to get his take. But it's like pop music meets EDM meets hip hop production, and the sound is fresh and clean. And there's at least ten tracks on that album that are just sick. Yeah, it's like cool. I'm, I'm not, I'm always gonna be an open-minded person about anything. So, you know, if I like it, I'm just gonna try. It. I don't even care. Everyone, people will be like, "Oh, Bieber for reals." I'm like, "No, it's <laughs> it's good." Okay, I should stop talking about that. We're talking about the iPad. It's Brian Tong's Justin Bieber review. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're talking about the iPad. Yeah. So, again, really immersive. Uh, if you like what the iPad does and you want it on a bigger screen, you're going to love this. Now, the other thing about it, though, right, Apple promoted really the biggest differentiator about it was that pencil and that smart keyboard pad. But Dum Dums at Apple, I pre ordered it right away online, but now the pre orders are delayed out four to five weeks. Oh, my gosh. Okay, you might Beecham. not even get it in time for Christmas, dude. Not only that, Beecham, even on the first day of sale for the iPad Pro, they didn't even have them in stores. That is a bummer. So, the key differentiating product that makes this unique to itself, they don't have either of them. How <laughs> stupid is that? That is very dumb, man. Everyone has to wait for pieces of their iPad to show up. That is so. Oh my God, I can't. What, what do you think I that would... could be? What do you think that could be, Beecham? I don't know. That could be. Um, I'm not prepared with the sound effect. But. I think that is a horrible, <laughs> horrible, really bad apple. It's just a disgusting apple. Ah! <laughs> oh, I, I was giving you, I was stretching it. <laughs> I was stretching it to give you time. We Thanks. should just have a resident screamer in the in gonna, the podcast. I'm just gonna like get a bunch of screams together for the next show. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, um, you know, overall though, I think as Apple is promoting it as a laptop replacement, 
it's not there yet. I don't think it it's it just won't be, but I'm gonna give it a go and just use that smart keyboard case when it comes in for a week straight and see how I feel about that. Cool. I'm gonna force myself to. Um, the pencil's cool. I got a bunch of creative apps on here. I'm not one who's gonna be drawing all the time, but I think this thing has the biggest potential as a creative device as long as the apps get developed for it properly. So uh it's it's honestly really cool though. It's it's pretty badass. It's a it's a head turner only because it's so damn big, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they should make like a comic book color, like a comic book coloring book where you have to color in your own comics. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh. I could see you doing that on your iPad. I would totally <laughs> do that. <laughs> Honestly, I would totally do that. Um, just others, also to follow up with the iPad Pro, just some other tidbits about it. They've run benchmarks on this. Uh, Ars Technica ran Geek Bench benchmarks and the results have shown this thing is a monster okay the ipad pro's a9x processor it's a dual core chip outperforms the current 12 inch retina macbook with an intel core m processor it outperforms a laptop wow. that is okay crazy. not only that if that's just raw power but if you're talking about graphics performance the actual graphics performance of the ipad pro outperforms 2015 15 inch retina macbook pros Whoa. and lower so it, it outdoes a 15 inch macbook pro it outdoes a 13 inch retina macbook pro all the 2015 models it outdoes the surface pro it outdoes the ipads all ipads and graphics it's a beast this thing has so much power it looks beautiful so. i know my my uh, i have a macbook pro for work and the screen just looks amazing i, I have to always look at pictures on that so yeah i'm very really excited nice. to see what it looks like on an ipad pro super super nice um some other tidbits that came out because we can't test it but reviewers have said the actual stylus or the sorry oh my gosh i just said it the pencil not the, <laughs> it's not a it's not the stylus <laughs> the pencil when you like have it on a table and you roll if you just like have it sitting there it's weighted so that it ends up rolling into place so that the word pencil shows up on top oh wow that's funny man that is so <laughs> stupid. Get out of everything. <laughs> They're like, yo, branding. You know, that comes from like a marketing person oh, and no one yeah. else. Totally. Ives is like, damn it. Fine, I'll do this crap. <laughs> he's, he's like, why do I have to do this? Let's not put an eraser on it. Let's fucking, oh, oh my God. <laughs> you have to bleep that out. Let's let it roll. Man, this show is deteriorating. I can't believe I just said that. They had meetings about that. They're like, we have to figure out how this pen will always show the logo. And then some guys came up with an idea and they produced it. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Also, uh, do you, I don't know if you have this video pulled up or not, but did you see the Surface Pro versus iPad Pro response time? I did, I did. Um, here we go. I got it right so here. This is crazy. Of course, they're not using the same exact application, so it may not necessarily be completely accurate, but they're both using their Notes app. And you can actually see the iPad Pro doing these like smooth, quick lines and the Surface Pro. The lines like are delayed. They're a little more jaggy. It's yeah, that, that very was, noticeable. When he did that really fast, that was very, very noticeable how fast the iPad Pro is. That's cool. Yeah. Like so, squiggly. you know, I want to see this side by side with actual similar apps. Yeah. Like the <laughs> uh, crea like the creative, you know, drawing apps, something like um, Procreate or uh, Adobe Draw. I want people to do that same test, but you know, initially it it looks it just shows how responsive at least the iPad Pro pen is, which is pencil is, which is pretty cool. That is I'm, cool. I'm not I'm not used to we've been talking about it as a pencil and now that it's finally out, I'm not used to calling it a pencil. No, it doesn't make sense to be called a pencil. It has to be a pen. <laughs> Dude, it's a stylus. I know. It's a stylus. So but the the uh, the rubber tip it actually, I got to use one in store, and when you do, like, brush strokes, when you turn it on the side, the actual stroke does get wider. So, I mean, it's cool. It is super cool. Right on. And I did some cool watercolor stuff. I was like, all right, this is pretty neat. So um, the iPad Pro, also Tim Cook, you know, he's hyping this up and talking it up. He says he believes, and this is, again, coming from the CEO of Apple, so just know where he's coming from he says that the ipad pro will replace notebooks and desktops yeah I, I i don't know about that um that's what he thinks i mean sure possibly i don't know i i just when i'm trying to get some work done i just need like a laptop with a keyboard in front of me you know i can't really get anything done on an ipad 
I mean, I, I get what he's trying to say. It's all from your perspective. And if that's what he wants to believe, it's fine. But there's certain things that I, even just using this now, I have to, I want and have to use a laptop to do them to get them done. Yeah, for sure. Like that's just that's just the bottom line. So even you know Excel documents, word processing. His his quote was like, "Here we go." I think if you're looking at a PC, why would you buy a PC anymore? No, really, why would you buy one? Yes, the iPad Pro is a replacement for a notebook or a desktop for many many people. They will start using it and conclude they no longer need to use anything else other than their phones. Do you believe this statement to be true or false, Stephen Beecham? False. False. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out what happens um, and how this all shakes out. Now, since we're talking about, we kind of talked about this on the Apple Byte actual video show. I thought the story is fun because we're talking about products. Everyone's buying, you know, the Apple iPad Pro 128 gig is actually sold out in stores right now. So they don't have pencils. They don't have smart keyboard cases and they're out of 128 gig uh, iPad Pros. But... If you had to guess, did you see this? What's the lowest rated Apple product in Apple's online store? What do you think it is? I'm looking at it right now, and I'm actually – I'm pretty surprised. Uh, you are surprised? Is, yeah. I mean, I was thinking it was going to be like an iPod or something. but Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, or, a you know, some pair of headphones. But it is the three-foot lightning cable. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree, though. I know. How, how useful is that? It's only three feet. Well, three feet is yeah, – Three feet not, is short. Not, yeah, it's pretty short. But also, I'm surprised that I looked up even Apple's headphones and earpods, and they were rated higher than the lightning cables. Like, I've had two lightning cables, pretty much like the rubber breaks at right oh, at yeah. the end of the corner, and then the wires get exposed, and they just pretty much deteriorate pretty quickly. And so I get why, because their stuff just isn't that durable, right? The yeah. other product, it was actually tied. So like that, the lightning cable USB to th- uh USB to lightning cable, and then also the MagSafe power adapter, they both had over 1,000 one-star reviews. Oh, yeah. I mean, my mine for my, my work laptop is frayed. Every every Apple cable I have is frayed, and it's That's like breaking. Saying. I have to put little pieces of tape around it. And this morning, I know I was bragging about my headphones lasting for a long time, <laughs> but this morning, the right side of my headphones just stopped working. What? Like after like two, two and a half years, just out of nowhere. Oh my gosh. But the he- but the microphone still works, so I can still talk through the microphone, but I just can't hear in one one ear. So Yeah, that, you need to you need yeah. to give a you need to give a, a one star rating for that thing, man. <laughs> that's that's what it deserves. I will. Well no actually I'm giving I'm giving the headphones a high rating because they last me for over two years. Just this oh, morning. Okay. Just this okay, well, morning. That's, it died. Fair. that's totally yeah, fair. Yeah. So totally I, I have fair. to give that a good good review. A good review? Okay. Um, also, following up on just things happening around in the Apple space, this is kind of a, a rumbling that has been going on. But according to the Wall Street Journal, Apple and banks are in talks on a mobile person-to-person payment service. Hmm, I'm trying to think what. I haven't heard of anything like this before. Hmm. Um, Venmo? Venmo. PayPal? So yes. I, I actually heard it was a Bridget Carey story that, Apple is in talks with Venmo. I don't know if they're so, in talks with Venmo directly. I mean that that could be. I know they're talking to the banks that you know basically back these fi- these financial institutions that back this up. I it would be weird for them. Here's why I don't think Apple would even get involved with Venmo. Venmo is owned by PayPal. PayPal makes their money off of payments. I don't see how it benefits. PayPal to get scooped up by Apple unless Apple's giving them lots and lots of money. Yeah. You know, if they want Venmo to be to support Apple Pay, like as one of the pay, you know, as kind of act like the bank, then that makes sense if they're partnering in that way, but I don't see Apple taking over Venmo or replacing it, right? Yeah, yeah. And right now people are using Venmo, people are using their mobile banking apps to exchange money. I think Apple Pay just wants to be a part of that, but Quite honestly, they're they're pretty late to the race. I don't see people all of a sudden, you know, iPhones are prevalent. People are using Apple Pay once in a while. I don't know. I don't yes. know if they'd actually start doing it. I found the headline from Bridget, and it is there is a question mark there. Apple talking to Venmo? Question mark. So you know, it's up I think in the that's, air. I think that's a clickbait headline, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because there's been it's like. Oh, well, Apple, it's like really what they're trying to say is Apple going to get into the mobile payments game, but instead they're like, Apple to acquire Venmo? It's like, come on. <laughs> come on. That's that's clickbait, man. 
You're all, it worked. We'll see. Yeah. Anyways, Apple did acquire a patent. Um, it was granted to them by the U.S. Patent Trade Office uh, for a transfer of electronic funds between electronic devices. So that's why there's all this speculation. There's all this rumbling around it. It's going to happen. It's it's not that hard for them to pull this off and make an agreement with the bank. So we'll see. I just don't see them being able to rise and really take over. Apple wants to be the wallet for everyone. I, I thought Apple Pay would actually be adopted a little more quickly. It is being used, but it's actually not being used as much as I thought as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's very hit or miss. Like everyone I talk to, they say they go somewhere and there's an Apple kiosk there to pay with your Apple Pay. And then nine times out of 10, it just doesn't work. Yeah, and the, and the people working there are like, we don't know. It doesn't work yet. So, you know. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. This, okay, here's another patent that I just wanted to put this in the show because I love the title of it. Do you want me, do you want me to read it for you? Sure. Okay. So the story is that Apple has a new patent that was gra- published. Um, it has not been granted yet. That would actually use electrodes to dry out wet iPhones. Like if you get moisture inside your iPhone... It would actually be able to expel the water from the speaker and the microphone cavities by using electric charges and acoustics on the surface of like the internals to get that water out. Okay, this is cool. This is super useful. That sounds so crazy to me. But here's what the name of the uh, patent application is. Okay, liquid expulsion from an orifice. (laughs) Wow. The patent application is for liquid expulsion from an orifice. That could be anything. That could be so many things. That's a very broad patent uh, filing there. Of course, the patent has more details following that headline. <laughs> but I just wanted to uh, throw it out there. But in reality, I do think this would be a great thing. The It might save your phone, but Apple has, you know how Apple has that like water detection sensor. So they basically, when yes. you try and get it, when you try and get it repaired, they're like, Oh, dude, you got water in it. Uh, you have to pay this amount. Yeah, that's breach probably not of gonna contract. That. Yeah, that's not going to change that, right? I know, I know. It's not. So it might help your phone, but even if it helps it, it doesn't mean that you're still you're still going to have to pay that extra money if you took it in to get repaired anyways. I know. I don't, when I hear electrodes and water, I just feel like <laughs> danger. That sounds like dangerous to me. <laughs> danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Totally. But yeah, okay. I've, I've, I've had the test where they test for water, and they're like, oh, right. you got water in there. Sorry, man. Yeah. You're like, no, I didn't. You can't honor your contract. Like, dude, I didn't. (laughs) And then you make, and then everyone makes up the story. I was in the, I shower with it a lot. I just leave it on my sink. And then they'll be like, okay, okay, I'll I'll give that to you. (laughs) Like, so if you guys face that problem, if you directly dropped your entire phone in a pool, just say you shower with it and the steam gets to it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm putting a bag of rice while you're at it, right? Do that. Yes, that helps. Okay, some two quick things, software updates to let you guys know about. The second TV OS beta is out, and the third iOS and OS 10 betas are out for developers, fine-tuning the current operating systems. Also, Apple Music for Android, now available in the Google Play Store. Apple promised to make their music service available on Android uh, when it launched, but they didn't say when. You can now go to the Google Play Store, download the app, and I do think this is good for families that are like mixed use families, right? Not everyone in a family, believe it or not. Oh yeah. They don't all use Apple devices. So it's cool. You might even want to like give the gift that keeps giving, share your Apple music account with like a friend or a buddy who's on Android. And maybe, maybe they'll jump over to the dark side. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Um, this one is something that's close and dear to our heart in a movie update. Steve jobs, the movie has been pulled from over 2,000 movie theaters. Which is shocking to me because it looks like the, the previews just look so good. It looks like such a good movie. And, how, how you know, I'm shocked that it's doing so poorly. Yeah, it's uh, it was projected to – check this out, man. It was projected to earn in a debut weekend 15 to $19 million, which is, which is you know, substantial, that at is. least for a movie like that. But at this point in time, it's earned only $16 million. So it's pretty much hit that opening weekend range. But like a month later, audiences are not going to see it. So they pulled it from over 2,000 screens. And uh, you can still go see it. It's limited. But you and I have agreed, right? We're going to try and go see this movie this weekend, right? Are, did you, were you able to? It's are our you gonna homework. Do it? Yes, I have a babysitter okay. tomorrow night. Nice. I'm going. I'm AMC Theater in uh, Emeryville. Anyone want to join me? Meet me there. (laughs) 
If you're listening from Texas night. or the East Coast, feel free. I am also going to be watching it with my baby boo. Uh, we're going to go tomorrow, uh, I think around 2 o'clock, somewhere in the greater Los Angeles area. <laughs> yeah, so next week we'll have our, our real review of the movie. <laughs> I do want to let people know that, know that uh, this movie, unfortunately now shares the same fate as another really popular one that I personally wanted to see that has also been pulled over, pulled out from over uh, 2,000 theaters, Gem and the Holograms. I, do, I had no idea that movie even came out. <laughs> Seriously, that's how no, the, there's no promotion for that movie whatsoever. Okay, hold on. I need a, I, <laughs> I, have, I have the trailer here. <laughs> okay, this, I, need, I need to look this up. This is how horrible. Okay, this is an opening weekend movie, okay? After two weeks, the movie pulled in $2.1 million. Oh, my gosh. It averaged $570 per screen. Good for 15th place in its opening weekend. It's like 50 people per theater, maybe. <laughs> Dude, That's I don't crazy. even know. If they, I don't even. I don't even know. Why were we? Why did we need a gem in the Holograms reboot or a, a movie anyway? You I, know? The weird thing about it is like. Kids today don't know who Jem is. Yeah. And people who used to love Jem the cartoon are not going to go to a movie theater to watch that. I feel like Hollywood is just making movies for all the 30 somethings now who like grew up in the <laughs> 80s, you know? Like, oh, here's this True. other movie that you might like. So they're like, they're like, hey, kids, you guys aren't even watching TV or movies anyways. You're watching your stuff on the internet. So we're going to appeal to the older demographic. <laughs> yeah. It's people, true. People still remember going to movie theaters. So, yes, uh, just officially, Steve Jobs and Jem and the Holograms <laughs> share the same fate. It's, it's, a rela- it's a related story. It's a sad world. Okay, um, in a world that needs to get better and needs to do better, and I'm glad that Apple addressed this, I, wasn't, I wanted to see how this story shook out before we put in the show, but a lot of people might have seen a video from the Apple Store in Australia where an employee told four students exchange students but they were black teenagers that they needed to leave the apple store because actual employees in the store were concerned that they were going to steal stuff there's an actual video online that was posted i have apple, it do you want, do you want okay, me to play yeah, it? Okay. i don't know if we can hear it that well but just play it and see if we can hear what, what it said you know what's happening on here there's yeah. no yeah. Uh, seriously. Sad. Like the reason why I wanted to bring this up and bring this to light is first of all, Apple addressed the issue in a great way. Obviously, we know Apple's CEO Tim Cook is a gay CEO, one of the few, and he is out in the community. Everyone knows this. So he, of course, probably cares about issues of discrimination. He put out a statement that inclusion and diversity are among Apple's core values, and pretty much we are open to everyone. Is a long letter written to Apple. The actual store manager on site, after she heard what had happened, found who the kids were, went to the principal at their school, and apologized and invited them back. Apple sent out an official apology that said this does not represent their values, which is a great move. The students, they weren't all up in arms after Apple made the apology. They said that they felt that justice had been done because the store manager apologized to them, told them they're welcome there anytime. But to me, I just wanted to bring this to light because sometimes people are naive about stuff. This type of stuff happens every day, right? It happens all the time. Too much, too much. And it's like very frustrating, sad. And I'm glad, though, that Apple stepped up, they handled this the right way, and a store manager realized what was going on, and they weren't blind to it. And it's just a good lesson in life. Don't pretend like this stuff doesn't happen. Be aware of it, and don't let it happen again. And so, you know, I, 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 w- I don't have a, we don't have an apple pie or a kudos to apple sound effect, but <laughs> I would give them a, I'm gonna clap. Yeah. a round of applause. That's a good way, good way to ha- handle it, Apple. Are you, oh, you're doing the golf clap? <laughs> I did I the round of applause. I'm a golfer, so. I, I want to oh, do the round, round of applause. applause? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, good on Apple for taking care of that. Leo DeGreat135 is actually the one who brought it up to my attention on Twitter, but I don't like to just jump into things and make an uh, immediate assumption, and I'm glad that the story came out and that it was resolved. So uh, there you go. 
good on Apple. Hey, uh, let's get to the phone calls, yeah? All right, let's do it. And we have a few voicemails, and we're going to start with this one. Hi, this is Ancho. Do you know if the iPhone 7 will have a better, like, display, maybe an AMOLED or a better pixels per inch? Do I know this for sure or not? Uh, I might. Basically, there are rumors and rumblings that your answer will be probably a no. Uh, I I didn't throw in the story because it's such a small rumor and speculation. There's a lot of things that go out there. But Ming Chi Kuo, he's the KGI analyst guy that has broken a lot of stories in the past way earlier before anyone else. But he reported last week that Apple is unlikely to adapt AMOLED displays for the next gen iPhones in the and in the foreseeable future. Um, they still like their TFT LCD display tech. It still is compatible with their 3D touch technology, which to me is still huge, potentially huge. And I, I love 3D touch. I actually miss it on my iPad Pro. But the quick answer is that according to this report, and it's the only one and only claim, is that it will not have an AMOLED display coming anytime soon. Hmm. Okay. So there you go. All right. And voicemail number two. Hello, my name is Eric Taylor. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I just had a question about the Apple TV. And why do you guys think there isn't a remote app with the Apple TV? Why wasn't one released, you know, along with it? Is it something that Apple didn't want to do or will they do in the future? All right, thanks. And I enjoy you guys. You have a good one. What's up, Eric from Detroit? Thanks for uh, that. I think that he addresses a big thing. One of the bugaboos that I said out right of the bat that I gave him a bad apple is the fact that they didn't take the time to make their iOS remote app compatible, and it just completely doesn't work with the new Apple TV. Now, the reasoning or the thinking behind it that you know I came to is the fact that the touchpad remote on the Apple TV first is like a clickable button that you can slide your finger around and navigate it, and there really is no equivalent on the on the iOS app, they they like the idea that anywhere you press, it would be treated like a button. And if there was one device that is that would work exactly analogous to the touch remote that's with the Apple TV, it would really be the iPhone 6S that has force touch because you could slide your finger around it to swipe left and right, but then also you could push the screen really hard to treat it like a click on the Apple TV. If they're holding out on us, they should at least release it for the iPhone 6S so you get the same experience. They would have had to change the interface a little bit to make it compatible on current iOS devices without 3D Touch. But at the very least, they should have done something, and they didn't. So um, that's why I think that they didn't do it. You know, so. they they also kind of do this with iTunes where they, you know, they don't build a remote right away for the, the latest iTunes version. And they'll build it later. You know, it'll come out eventually. But they do lag sometimes on building remotes. Um you know, remote apps for their products. I think, you know, it's like not, I just think at the end of the day, it's not their top priority. Yeah, yeah. And so they're just like, ah, eh, second we'll, thought. we'll see if people complain and then we'll let them know. And they're hey, like, bro, you, my, know, you know what might be cool is if we build a remote for that. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, let's do that. Yeah, that, that, that'd be a good idea. Sure. All right, next call. I have eight minutes left on my battery on my laptop. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm okay, serious. Here we go. I'm serious. Hey, my name is Peter. I'm from Arizona. And I was wondering... Have they said anything about the Apple Watch 2? Is it going to have more features? Or have they even talked about it? Apple Goodbye. Watch 2. Apple Watch 2 rumblings are already out. We were going to put this in the main rundown, but we wanted to save it for your call, buddy. Apple Watch 2 development is reportedly underway and targeting the second or third quarter of 2016, according to a Chinese media source, UDN. Uh, Quanta Computer is believed to be the company that will be the Apple Watch manufacturer. Uh, it's rumored to have still the same battery life, but a slimmer form factor. There were rumblings that a, a camera might be integrated into it. That has not been confirmed. But at least from what we know, yeah. It, it, it would get me mad just from a standpoint of like, I get it, Apple upgrades devices every year typically. I felt like the Apple Watch should be something that gets upgraded every year and a half to two. This would time it for around a year and a half timeline, but... This, the Apple Watch still just doesn't do enough. Yeah. It's and it like, was like such a, you know, it was such a popular, everyone was so excited about it too. You'd think they'd put more time, you know, get get another version out faster. I'm just glad that, you know, the reality of the hype versus what it actually is, it's really died down a lot and people are understanding, oh, 
it's cool. I do like how it looks, but I don't. Uh, how about this? A large majority is in line with me that just says, ah, it's all right, but I don't do much. Most people use it to check the time and get text messages. <laughs> Most people. And they don't, like, seriously, right? That's what they do. Yeah, I know it does fitness and health, and there's some people that use that way, but most people, if you ask them, what do you use your iWatch, Apple Watch for? I check the time, and I check messages. And it <laughs> looks pretty. It looks pretty on my wrist. And I spent over $600 for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, next next call. Whoops. Sorry, everybody. I have five minutes Hey, left. Brian and Beecham. This is Jacob from the Los Angeles area. I just had a question about the Apple TV. So I have the third gen Apple TV, and I was considering upgrading to the fourth gen. But my question was, I'm not sure if I'll upgrade because the thing I really like the most is the new remote. So I was wondering if the new remote will work on the older Apple TVs. Thanks. Love your guys' show. Bye. All right. All things I have read and heard is that was a negative. Your new Apple touchpad remote will not work with the Apple TV from previous generations. The funny thing is, from what I know, at least up to this point, I don't think they're doing it yet, but I don't think they're selling replaceable remotes yet. I could be wrong, so someone has to correct me. But I do know you can program older remotes to work with the new Apple TV. So it works in that direction, but the direction that he's looking for to take the new remote and go back to the old Apple TV, there's nothing that is that I've seen or heard that has documented that it does work. If people are listening and I'm completely wrong on this and you can correct me, please let us know. That's why this is a show that involves you guys and makes you a part of it, but that's what I know up to this point. Okay. Is that a bad apple or is that a, an, a, eh. an okay apple, an eh apple? It's it's a par for the course apple. It's <laughs> okay. like they're like, no, buy the new thing, you idiot. We don't yeah. want to go backwards compatible. When has Apple ever actually done that? Like never. never. <laughs> so that that's just par for the course to me. Okay, last call. Hey, Brian. Uh, this is Michael calling. I had a question regarding the uh, iPad Pro. So now, uh, for example, um, the iPad Mini 4, I have that one, and I can't open up certain pages on, like, web browsers or online when I have to do schoolwork or other things. Will the iPad Pro be able to support um, those windows or stuff that I have to open up online? I'm like, I get these weird notifications that I can't support screen resolutions or it's not supported by this device or whatever it is, random online stuff, like when I either schoolwork or whatever I do. Um, yeah, that's my question. All right, thanks. Okay, so I don't know this 100% for sure because I'm not sure what type of sites <laughs> what type of sites you're opening <laughs> and what type of plugins there need to be supported. But I do know that the Surface Pro 4, because it's based off of a desktop operating system and a full desktop class browser, it'll have a better chance of being compatible with almost every kind of site, pop-up, plugin, again, whatever site you're trying to look at. It, it has a higher chance of being more compatible with the Surface Pro than the iPad Pro because of the nature of how it acts, behaves, and how it's built from the ground up. Okay, so I'm, I'm, so the iPad Mini doesn't scale up a lot of web pages? Is that what he's saying? I don't even know exactly what the warning or alert or you know denial message he's getting is because I haven't seen it. Um, I don't surf those sites. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. I'm messing with you. But... Yeah, ultimately, you'll have the best chance of compatibility with the Surface Pro 4 because it is really can be a true desktop compatible device. According to Tim Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Cook says you'll never need it again, though. So um, go right ahead on that iPad. No, I really haven't experienced that yet, but that's that's what I, my gut is telling me just based on what we know. So Maybe tweet us a screenshot of, of the... Uh... The oh, air, the air you're getting. I don't know what site he's using. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's tweeting it, you won't get you won't get busted for anything. Some people tweet a lot of stuff, Beach. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Woo! I just don't want to see the letter X all up on that screen, man. Twitter's the wild, wild west. It is it is? Um, so there you go, guys. I think that's pretty much gonna do it for today, right? That's it, man. Awesome. All right, we're gonna wrap things up. I turned the brightness down on my screen all the way to one bar. I squeezed out six more additional minutes. I'm so happy. <laughs> we, 
the show. But um, we will see you guys next time again. If you guys want to call us and be a part of the show, it's 1-800-616-2638. That's the Apple Bike Country. Crunchy, I can't even talk. Beach, why don't you say bye to everybody? Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for wa- listening and watching the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy with your host, Brian Tong. We will Woo! see you next next Friday. Yes. We'll be in the same room, so it'll probably be a little more connected, and I won't cuss in the middle of the show. Yes, and I will just be getting back from the L.A. Auto Show so I can maybe tell some stories about that. Nice. All right, we'll see you guys soon. All Peace. Right.